Now you're still above it. So in Bitcoin land, this is okay. Yes, it's a big pullback, but it is not donezo for Bitcoin. Hello everyone, today Gareth Soloway talks about the latest sell-off in the crypto and Bitcoin market, discuss yields and dollar as well as macro analysis, including various stocks and their price patterns. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin BTC 42,000. $939 did not crash by $4,000 in hours because of panic over United States regulators rejecting the spot exchange traded fund ETF. That is the opinion of popular commentators after flash BTC price weakness sparked half a billion dollars of crypto long liquidations. Coming at a conspicuous time for Bitcoin, which celebrates its 15th birthday on January 3, the latest snap BTC price downside took the market down almost 9%, data confirms. Check it out. Here's your intraday 10 minute chart of Bitcoin. You can see the cliff dive. This is what happens when people use leverage. It's great on the upside if we don't get pullbacks. But what happens is when you're using 25X leverage, you're going to get flushed here and it's extra coins that are going to be sold. This is what, again, occurs when you have the leverage in the system. It's not unusual. Again, one of the things and I talked about this yesterday on trading the close, if we flip over to the daily chart, I said yesterday, and you can go back and watch that trading the close, I said it is a weak breakout on on Bitcoin. Now, so many people were like, well, how does he know that? And I talked about this with Tony yesterday, right? So basically what you had to see yesterday is you have all this hype coming up because the spot ETF is gonna be approved and we're hearing anywhere from today to Friday, right? Anywhere in this range. So Bitcoin was perfectly set up to break out above this high pivot. And sure enough, it did. But literally, look at the tail. Is that a strong breakout when you form a tail and price goes up to 46,000 but then closes barely above the previous high? And the answer is no. And you have to look at it and extrapolate, right? You have to say to yourself, okay, well, why? Why was this? Why did price get pushed back down here? And the answer is simply, there were sellers. And so if you have all the small investors so pumped about the Bitcoin ETF. They're not selling, guys. Let's be honest. The, the, the hodlers, all of those players are not going to sell. So who's selling? And the answer is big money. Big money is unloading into that breakout. They know that this is extra volume being caused right here on the breakout, and they are unloading into it. The fact that we barely closed above that previous high, it was a warning sign, again, given you to you yesterday in trading the close, which I'll be on today at 3.55 p.m. Eastern time, and then look at the drop on Bitcoin today from basically 45,000 down to almost 41,000. 10% drops, a big drop. Now, I wanna show you some levels here. There's no levels on the charts. We're gonna create some right now for you guys. I'm going to basically take this pivot here and we're going to stretch a line right through here and look at this trend line. This is the trend line that I care about as a technician. So again, just simply put, look at this trend line here, right? We have a trend line again with a pivot point, pivot point here, all along here, all along here to here to here and we pierced it today. Now you're still above it. So in Bitcoin land, this is okay. Yes, it's a big pullback, but it is not donezo for Bitcoin. And, and by the way, when I say done, I just mean short term, like short term, bigger correction or not, not like done, done. Um, but in any case, you have your flat line up here. Let me, let me add that in right now so we can have that on the chart. Let's put our flat line right across. And basically what we have here, if we flip back to the chart, is our little wedge pattern. You tried to break out. I would call this at this point a failed breakout, but you haven't broken down yet either. Either. And that is the key on the Bitcoin chart. So can we break up and still go up to 48 to 50,000? I don't know. A lot of people calling for it now. Again, that was a chart level I came up with months and months and months ago. But ultimately, still now everyone's saying it makes me wonder if it's really going to happen. Or are we going to see the bigger correction finally take hold, which sends us to 38,000? And then if that gets broken, we could go down as low as 30,000. 30,000, though, that is a level at this point I would be a buyer at on Bitcoin, it would be a huge correction. Um, and again, likely at least a swing trade opportunity. But I just wanna to quickly touch on gold. Real quick on gold, gold is pulling back today, so we still do not have a breakout on gold. And again, I wanna see confirmation, not just a close above, 
We haven't even had a close above this level, but I want to see a close above with a confirm, confirming factor that tells me it's not a fake out. But once it breaks out, I think the money flies into gold and gold goes significantly higher. Taking a look at oil next. Let's go into oil. So oil is trading slightly positive today after four down days in a row. Makes sense that, again, it probably was due for a little bit of a bounce. We are kind of coming into this bottom level of support as well. And again, if we draw that line across, there's a lot of support right down here. Now, I will say this. If you look at the oil chart, there's, again, this is a pivotal level, according to what I'm seeing, that we are holding at this point. And again, if I zoom out on this, I want to show this to you guys because this is a big deal. So if we go here, in fact, I'm going to flip over to the weekly chart. I think it's easier on the weekly to see. Essentially, what we have is a trend line right through here. Right? And again, I think we can all see this. This is going back to, by the way, 2019. So what we have clearly is that this is a pivot. And when you say pivot point, it means that if price is above it, maybe it goes up. And that's the likely scenario. But a pivot means that if you get below, then price could easily fall precipitously. Right now, you're still holding above this level. That is your pivot point. This is your fulcrum, essentially. This is this that point where it goes one way or the other. So let's watch and see. It's right around $65 to $66. If we start trading down into that or below that, I would almost guarantee it's telling us a recession is on the horizon. Uh, lastly, natural gas, guys. Again, I kind of try to touch base on this once a day. I know a lot of fans out there. Natural gas yesterday, again, kind of had a little bit of a pushback. It's starting to push back up again today. Right now, I'm looking for a good close on Nat gas above this level and really a takeoff. I think, again, we could be looking at maybe a move back to $3. Looking at the chart on the daily chart, quickly going over this. What do we see here? Well, we knew that we were into lots of resistance. It seemed like the market would never go down into the end of the year. As I explained yesterday, I think there were a lot of people that probably wanted to sell but didn't want to pay taxes in 2023, so they pushed it off to this year. I do think you're seeing some of that continuing to play out today. I also think that there's starting to be new fears out there. Yields are starting to go up. The dollar's starting to go up. Those are signals of rotation into safer assets, right? Being more careful. You're rotating rotating into these type of things, being more, again, aware of the extracurricular global geopolitical picture out there. All right, so again, if we continue to pull back on this chart on the spiders, where would a downside reasonable target be? And the answer is pretty simple here, right? You start basically doing your fibs, and what I do, and this is exactly play-by-play -play how I decipher this. So when I see a massive move up like this, and again, we know that the NASDAQ biggest move since 1999 last year. S&P, not quite the biggest one, but nonetheless, still impressive move. So let's do our Fibonacci levels here, and we take it to the highest point. And what I do here is I say, okay, here's my Fibs, and now in terms of a pullback, is there any Fibonacci level that aligns with a p previous pivot point on the chart? And for instance, one of the things that I would pay attention to, for instance, right? So you have this high here, and then you have this high right here. Okay, so those are two major pivots generally in the same location. The question again is, do they align with anything? And you can see right here, they do align with the 382 and the 236. So in general, I would start saying right in this vicinity, here is where your likely pullback is. That's between uh, 460 on the SPY and 452. Now, what that does is it gives us a general target for a pullback early in the year before buyers likely will step up. The big question is, and this is going to be the big one, guys, and this is some great education, is that if we get into this scenario, and I'm going to rotate this chart away because I want to show you guys, right? So let's just say we do get a pullback, all right, from that high. So we have a big move up, and we hit resistance. We pull back a little bit. Now, you have to decide here, and this is what the chart is going to tell us, is are we going to head back up to new highs or are we going to eventually roll over to lows? And the way you decipher that, folks, is based on the angle, the angle of the move. So when you have a drawdown like this, like it looks like we're starting to have, what you want to look for is do we go straight back up like this, which would be bullish, or do we go more sideways, which shows an equal amount of buyers and sellers 
equaling essentially creating bearish consolidation. So this is where angles, I mean, again, so many people think charts are so easy and they are once you learn the metrics of them. But essentially the angle means everything. And this is something I teach in the Winning Trader series is that you have to start looking at the angle. This would be a bear flag. This would tell you downside. This would be a vertical move for a double top or maybe it goes up like that, then consolidates and then breaks out. And this would be the bull flag pattern, right? So essentially, once we get this pullback, we then start analyzing how price action is when it starts to bounce. Is it flatlining sideways or slightly higher? Or is it a vertical buyers coming right back in and taking control of things? All right, so I just wanted to go over that. I think that's super important for us to understand as we pull back. Because listen, I might have my bigger views that I think the economy economy is in trouble. I do think we're going to hit a recession. But honestly, I don't know. I mean, there's there's nothing that's written in stone. There's no crystal ball telling any of us exactly what the markets are going to do. And so what we do is we have our general view on the overall economic picture. Mine happens to be negative for 2024, but you don't know for sure. And that's where the charts guide you. The charts work and tell you. They give you insights into that. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the dollar chart. The dollar, again, is getting a bounce today, which makes sense, right? If the equity markets are down, if the futures are down, it tells us that the dollar's probably up. It's a run to safety, or it's at least an oversold bounce on the US dollar. Now, look at this line right here. Remember, we talked about this line. This was a long-term trend line. And I was like, okay, this really should be a major level where either we hold it or we break down. And we broke below it a little bit, and now we've recaptured it. And this is where, as a trader, you need to go back to the drawing board and you say, okay, well, that level obviously didn't turn out to be that amazing, right? Because if it was that amazing, we, we, we would have either bounced right at the level and gone up, or we would have gone down and broken down and only retraced to the level before falling further. So needless to say, that level was not the best level in the world. And that's what trading is about. That's what charting is about. You're not always going to find the best levels. Even myself, I've done this for 24 years now, and you still have to say to yourself, okay, so why, why did price bounce there? Why was this the low pivot before a bounce versus my line? My line must not have been the most prominent ma macro big level out there. So let's go back to the drawing board and let's take a look here, right? So let's see what we can find. And just looking at this chart, if I take another trend line and I see this high right here, right? So let's take a look. So we have this high right here and this high here, and then we kind of have a pivot here and here, and it almost like you could almost make a case that there's a line right down there. So that's what I do with my eyes. I start to look at other points. Where are the other points going? And essentially what we can see here is if we go back to the chart and I put a trend line here and I draw it down, look at what you get. And this is the coolest stuff about charting is that it's it's almost like it, it again it reminds me of connect the dots going back to being a kid where you kind of drew those shapes and you could connect these dots you connect one two three and, you, and all of a sudden it comes out to be some animal but you don't know early on what animal it's going to be same thing here it's always kind of a figuring out type of thing and so what we want to do now is we want to say okay now we know our most prominent line right and essentially what that is is here to here kisses here goes right through this area, kisses this on the on the support side, and look at that, right down to that level. Now, having said that, where do we look for ta the target on the US dollar to be? So how high is it gonna go? Now, the first thing I'm seeing is you have this pivot low, and if we draw that across, it's basically in alignment. So the dollar is into resistance here, but this would be only a minor level. Major levels are major pivot tops. Minor levels would be just little pivots right here on the chart that the dollar is running up into. Now, interestingly enough, we do have the Fed minutes today at 2 p.m., so let's see what the Fed says. Does it cause the dollar to start coming down? If that did happen, then you would anticipate the markets getting a bounce on that scenario. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable.